Welcome everyone, I'm Kimberly Boschman and this is the Intentionally Intuitive Podcast. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the numerology and the energy for the upcoming full moon that's occurring July 13th or 14th, depending on where you live within the world. Before we get into that reading, I just want to mention that this is, of course, a general forecast, a general reading. If you would like a personalized reading, which will be a much deeper dive into your own personal numerology, uh, please book some time with me. I would love to work with you. My information is in the description box below. Please like, comment, and share. I absolutely appreciate and love hearing from you all. Your support has been so kind, so loving, so appreciated, um, and it helps to really bring even more awareness to numerology, and it helps to grow my little channel, and I just absolutely appreciate each and every one of you. I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, so we are, of course, going to look at both the collective numerology and energy, as well as for each individual life path number. So before we get into that, I did pull an animal spirit message for this illumination and we got seahorse energy. And so seahorse's message is all about composure and serenity. And I think this is, <laughs> this is very, very fitting for the energies that we may see during this illumination that may come up, uh, which I'll talk about, of course. But one thing I just want you to keep in mind is if things become challenging with this energy, because there is a lot of transformative energy that's going to be sort of highlighted and it's sort of swirling about, um, if things feel a little bit challenging as you move through some of those transformations, just remember seahorse energy. If you've ever watched a seahorse and you know you can sometimes see them like in aquariums and that sort of thing. They're so peaceful. <laughs> They're so calm. There's just this very tranquil energy about them. And you can see all their little, um, their little fins, I guess, um, moving. And they just seem to just, just be just, they're just floating. It's like they're floating in outer space, but there's just this tranquility to them. And it honestly just brings so much peace to, it's almost like you can feel that energy and it, absorbs into your own environment, if that makes sense. So I think it's going to just be important to remember that we are not responsible for the harmony or the peace of others. We are responsible for our own harmony and peace. And so whatever we need to do to keep coming back to that center, especially if things are, you know, if we're going through some kind of chaos or turmoil, it's up to us to find that serenity. It's up to us to find that composure. And so I think seahorse is just reminding us that it is possible, even when you're, you know, floating in a current, right? You know, or, or going through an uphill battle, you can find your own peace and tranquility through that experience. <clears throat> You'll still have to overcome whatever it is, but it will help you to move into and get into the flow. So beautiful energy there. I think it's really, um, helpful. Like I said, as we move through the energies of this illumination, so Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at sort of the overall numerology forecast for the collective. Okay, so the energies that I want to focus on for this illumination are that of the 8, the 13, 4, the 9, and the 5. Uh, so I think this is going to be an interesting mixing pot of energy, to be honest. I get this sense of sort of like push-pull energy but also very complementary energy. So it's an interesting sort of dichotomy and synergy happening here uh, that we may feel this and sort of need to figure out how to best work with these vibrations to make them work for us and the good of all. So again, we go back to seahorse spirit, right? Um, figuring out how to go with the flow, surrender, but then also do our part and take action where needed. Uh, it's an interesting energy. Like I said, I definitely feel like, especially collectively on sort of a bigger stage, we're going to see sort of this push pull energy come out. Um, I think it's already here, but, but I think it's going to be sort of <clears throat> highlighted even more with this illumination. So right out of the gate, I am drawn towards the energy of the eight, and with this, I'm seeing potential or increased uh, power struggles, 
concerns of dominance or control, uh, which see, which seems to have well, it seems to be a, a reoccurring theme for you know thousands of years, <laughs> but uh, but definitely in the last few years we've seen sort of an increase with that. Uh, and we're definitely seeing that in, in certain places throughout the world at the moment. And so there really is sort of this need to put an effort in to find a way to balance that energy. So anything that surfaces or is initiated now will be working under the influence of the four. So think of very slow pros, uh, progress, right? A lot of effort and determination and perseverance. So the four energy will tear down to rebuild. And also this is 13 four energy. So this is very like Plutonian energy. This is like tower energy as well. It's going to dismantle what it needs to dismantle so that we can rebuild where we need to rebuild. Uh, but that takes time. And again, perseverance. So if a shift in power or control needs to happen, it can very well happen, but only with the sort of dismantling of the old in order to put in place something much more sustainable uh, with much more um, sort of far reaching solutions. So it can sometimes feel like the four is working against us, <clears throat> but it's it's only asking us to be very discerning when it comes to where we invest our time, our energy, and our resources. So both the eight and the four are very, very ambitious energies. The eight sees the vast bigger picture and the four is the master of the details. So together, these energies can accomplish great things, but they have to work together without one energy being more dominant than the other. So finances could easily come into focus now, including physical resources, land, food, money, goods. Because the four is just as prominent here as the eight, that tells me that there needs to be some kind of restructuring in order to build something much more sustainable that works better than the previous systems. So again, I expect we may see some reorganization, some big shifts, disruptions, and dismantling in order to build something better that works for the greater good rather than the good of just a few. And the fact that it's 13-4 energy that we're working with, again, it could sort of have this more Plutonian feel, which is sort of like... Um, <clears throat> I don't want to say chaos, but it just makes me think of like Pluto or Mars energy, right? It's like, well, really Pluto energy where it's like going to get in there. It's going to, you know, dismantle what it needs to dismantle, break down any barriers it needs to break down in order to gain a greater perspective and then build something much better. Um, but in that process can feel very uncomfortable, can feel very disorienting, it, um, so yeah, so again, we just want to think of seahorse energy <laughs> and find our peace and calm through that chaos, right? Because that chaos is necessary, or again, that dismantling, right, is necessary to not only gain a greater and better, broader perspective, but to build something that's just more evolved, right? And to put in place systems that are much more evolved, um, so, okay. So I make reference towards the good of all because we are also have very prominent nine energy with this illumination. So where the eight and the four can be more like focused energy and more sort of exclusive, so to speak, the nine is pretty, pretty much entirely inclusive. The nine energy is going to look for solutions to benefit the greater good, the we. And so while the four and the eight are building towards a greater vision, the nine is here to make sure that the focus of that building takes into consideration what is best for all, taking all sides into account and then coming up to, for with a solution that makes the most sense to benefit the all without suppressing or oppressing others, right? So we are also in a six universal year. And so again, that which is greater than just ourselves. And we're moving from sort of the heart center, 
that will continue to be emphasized now, especially with this nine energy. And again, six, the six universal year, we have all these energies sort of, again, sort of swirling about helping us to see beyond our own needs and see how we can um, <clears throat> come, come to some sort of compromise, um, so come to some sort of solution to work together. We have a lot of potent energies that are really pushing us to do that. Now, of course, we have free will. We are, you know, sovereign beings, so we can make those decisions. But, you know, if the individual does it, and if enough individuals do it, eventually we see the collective doing it. And so it all starts with us, ultimately, right? So the potent five energy reminds us that nothing truly great can happen without a tremendous amount of change. And a necessary amount of chaos. That's just the way it is, right? The world is full of polarities. The universe is full of polarities. That's how things get done, whether we like it or not. The five brings the change and the transformation and the drive to build in a way that promotes freedom and autonomy. Anything oppressive will eventually fall apart or be broken apart under five energy. The four says it will sort of take time, right? It's not something that's going to happen quickly, but the five is chomping at the bit to make things happen now. It wants freedom. Anytime I think of five energy, I picture like this, this group of wild stallion galloping through an open meadow and the four is the gate, right? So it's kind of like, again, push pull energy you know, we know where we want to get to, we know how we want to get there, but we need to be focused and controlled in those, those movements getting us there, right? Like we have to, there's a planning stage to this. If we just completely broke out of the gate and ran free, um, we would miss some of the details and the details are going to be important here, especially as we're building something, um, sustainable for the long haul, right? <clears throat> So again, we have very ambitious, focused, controlled, and heart-centered energies being met with this explosive, expansive, freedom-seeking energy of the five. So again, push-pull is sort of an understatement here. And so again, it's about finding the balance so that we can incorporate all these energies, work with all these energies, and make them work for us and build something really, really great here. Like There's usually, or not even usually, there's never energies present to be worked with that aren't here to help us in some way, even if it feels un uncomfortable, right? So overall, I expect this illumination to bring to light areas collectively and individually where there needs to be some restructuring, some more inclusivity, transformation, and independent freedom. And again, the four will force us to go slowly to make sure that we get it right. And if we try to move fast, if we try to just throw something together, that 13-4 will take it all apart. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you're mastering something that takes time, when you're trying to build something um, that's great, it takes time. It's not something you can just throw together. And so it's kind of like working with a teacher who, when you don't do it right, will correct you. And again, it's the course corrections. And so that's the four energy. And so it's going to make sure that we get it right. Uh, it's going to take time. And so it's got to be for the highest good of not only ourselves, but of all involved. And so it's through this process that we will feel that push pull. And we need to decide how we can participate individually in a way that not only feels good for us, but also takes others into consideration as well. Now, remember, we're not responsible for others you know, what they do, how they're feeling, any of that. That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is with ourselves, but we are responsible for our actions because those actions bleed out into the collective, right? So, you know, so things may absolutely come to a head now, be dismantled. And after the confusion clears, then the more we can come together to rebuild in a more sustainable way, then the better, right? So again, this is going to be a slow process. I really want to drive that home because sometimes it's easy to give up on something that we're not seeing the instant gratification from, and you will not get the results that way. So if it's something that speaks to your heart, if it's something that really calls to you, 
the persistence, the perseverance has to be there. The patience has to be there. Um, you have to kind of commit for the long haul until you see the results again, if it speaks to you. So that's kind of where we're at collectively with this energy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast for each individual life path number now. Life path number two. So this is some really beautiful energy coming in for you all. Um, you could potentially see change in luck here, a turning of the tide, sort of things moving towards your, you know, into your favor, that sort of thing. But this is sort of um, like that hard work, work and purpose paying off now. So you've already put in the effort. You've already sort of done what you need to do around whatever this is. And so now you're sort of reaping the rewards of this energy. Um, but this is, this is beautiful energy or the potential for some really beautiful energy for you all as well. Um, this is also some energy here for you, an opportunity to explore sort of what you really truly want out of your experience now. And what do you want to do with it? Right? So find ways to, uh, work with this energy to follow your heart to follow your intuition, to follow the inspiration and really do what inspires you. So, you know, obviously you can't give up, you know, <laughs> your, you know, what you need in order to pay the bills and that sort of thing. But there's really something here coming in very, very strongly for you twos around, again, asking yourself and really listening to yourself when it comes to sort of exploring what it is that you really truly want at this time and how can you figure you know what what planning can you do what what actions can you take to move in that direction right it might look different when you get there but but it's going to ask you to this energy is going to ask you to take a closer look at that and then transform what you need to transform release what you need to release acquire what you need to acquire to be able to follow your heart and your intuition and do what inspires you, what really speaks to you, what brings you passion, what brings you joy. Allow yourself to do that. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the mundane and what we feel is necessary or what feels uh, obligatory to do. But this energy, because you have a you have an undercurrent here of um, of eleven energy, it's asking you to you know, not throw everything out, right? Not, not completely change gears, but to explore and find what, what brings you joy and do more of that. Right. So, but again, I feel like this energy is working with you in a sense, because there is this sort of, um, potential for, again, change in luck, turning of the tide, um, things just sort of working in your favor now, uh, with very little effort, which is beautiful. Um, and again, it could be because you've already put that effort in, or it could just be that, you know, the stars are shining on you now This for this illumination, or I should say the moon is shining on you for this illumination and working with you. So the key is to begin now. Don't keep putting it off. Don't keep talking yourself out of it. Don't keep coming up with excuses. Begin now. And if you have to take baby steps, baby steps are still steps. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you all so much for listening. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.